glory to Jesus Christ. We were not able to record the reflection that I gave for the men's meeting a few weeks ago. And so we decided that we would like to revisit that through this recording. And in that way, we'd be able to share it with you all. I'm going to go right into it. This is a story taken from a series created by St. Alphonsus Liguri called The Glories of Mary. This is a story about Theophilus. It says he's Patriarch of Constantinople, and the story takes place when he was Archdeacon of Adana. He was accused of a crime by malicious people and was relieved of his charge. Blinded by bitterness, he sought a Jewish magician who put him in touch with the devil. The devil said that if Theophilus wanted help, he must renounce Jesus and his mother Mary, put his renunciation in writing, sign it with his own hand, and then turn the document over to the devil. Theophilus wrote and signed over the dreadful document. On the following day, the bishop, realizing the wrong done to Theophilus, begged his pardon and restored him to his former position. Torn by remorse for the enormous sin he had committed, Theophilus almost fell into despair. He went to one of the churches and cast himself at the feet of Mary's image, where, mingling tears with his prayers, he said to her, O oh, Mother of God, I do not want to despair as long as I have you, who are so merciful and can help me. For forty days he continued weeping and praying to the Blessed Virgin. One night Mary appeared to him and said, Theophilus, what have you done? You have renounced my friendship and that of my son, and to whom? To my enemy and yours. O oh, lady, replied Theophilus, you must pardon me, and obtain pardon for me from your son. Mary saw his great confidence and said to him, Have courage, I shall pray to God for you. Encouraged by this, Theophilus increased his tears, penances, and prayers, and stayed before that image. After a time, Mary appeared to him again, and with a cheerful countenance said to him, Theophilus, I have presented your tears and prayers to God. He has accepted them and has pardoned you. From now on, be grateful and loyal. But my lady, answered Theophilus, that is not enough to comfort me completely. The devil still has that miserable document on which I renounced you and your son. You are able to restore it to me. One morning, Theophilus awoke to find the document lying on his breast. The next day, when the bishop and a great throng of people were in church, Theophilus threw himself at the bishop's feet. He told the bishop all that had happened and turned the diabolical document over to him. The bishop immediately had it burned in the presence of the throng of people. The people praised God's goodness and praised the mercy which Mary had exercised toward the sinner. Then Theophilus returned to Our Lady's Church, where, after three days, he died a consoling death, thanking Jesus and his Holy Mother. Amen. Well, the story practically needs no comment, but there were a few things that I wanted to draw out of it. The first um, seems to me most obvious question is, do we recommend ourselves, our families, our parish, and our country to the Blessed Virgin? To what lengths are we willing to go to recommend ourselves to the Lord through her? Do we have confidence? She has never refused. Can she see that when we ask it of her? Does our Lord see that? That we have this confidence and that we're willing to go to any lengths as Theophilus did. So remarkable how he not only did his penance of 40 days, mingling his tears with his prayers, but when Our Lady appeared to him and rebuked him 
but also seeing his confidence assured him that she would pray for him, he stayed and continued doing prayers and, and offering tears. And this really is remarkable. <laughs> it is so unlike us. It used to be that we thought it was sort of justified as though there was some something extreme and something kind of awkward about the way people expressed themselves in, in their sorrow. Like, little you know, Jacob heard that Joseph died, was torn by a wild beast, and he sat in sackcloth and put ashes on his head. Hmm, that's weird. Whereas, <clears throat> I've, I've, I've done something terrible and I've got assurance that I'll be forgiven, I think I'll go eat a bowl of cereal. We just really disconnect our need to humiliate ourselves and to really live and sense the wrong that we've done and to be willing to express it in a bodily way through repentance. So there were a few quotes I wanted to share that were elsewhere in the book by St. Ephraim. He says that the Immaculate Virgin, Queen of the Universe, is, quote, the only advocate of sinners, the refuge and salvation of the whole world. Elsewhere, he says, no other hope is given us but you, O most pure virgin. He also says, we beseech you to prevent your son from being angry at our sins and abandoning us to the power of the devil. And one, two more quotes. O oh, you who are full of grace, enlighten my understanding, loosen my tongue, that it may sing your praises, and especially the angelic salutation, which is so worthy of you. The, the angelic salutation is better known as the Hail Mary. Byzantine Christians and Russian Christians express it as the Rejoice, O Virgin. They say, Rejoice, O Virgin Theotokos Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, for thou hast borne Christ, the Savior of our souls. Elsewhere he says, Mary is the key to the gates of heaven. St. Siloan says, When God wants to have mercy on someone, he inspires someone else to pray for him, and he helps in this prayer. Something else that really stood out to me was how dreadful sin is and how it cuts us off from communion with God and how we really should be mindful of us. And this is the example of the saints in seeing just how dreadful and dire sin is. And when we have to present ourselves before our Lord, who is our Savior, who has provided for us our salvation, and in the face of all that, yet we continue to sin, we will find him as a judge, a perfect, merciful, and perfectly just judge. And we can learn from the story of Theophilus that it seems strange. It, in our world, it seems almost impersonal, as though there's a, a tiered class of citizenry. Like, there's the sinner down at the bottom, and then there's the higher and higher ranks of holiness and you kind of have to work your way up the chain but no we we don't recognize the dreadful consequences of sin if we're looking at it this way we really have to see our lord going to great lengths to provide recourse to us and the chief uh, among the those ranks is our blessed mother and we have to remember that we serve a God who creates his own recourse, who creates the recourse that we need for us to be restored to fellowship with him. And so this is what we should see in recommending ourselves to our Blessed Mother. And we should see the depths of the depravity of our sins, but we should be willing to do whatever it takes to avail ourselves of those means just like Theophilus. Glory to Jesus Christ.